Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is lecture 5H. We're going to think about how the environment contributes to phenotype, thereby confounding and sometimes masking the effects of natural genetic variation. We'll think about the effects of environment on height. We'll think about the effects of a particular environmental variable, caffeine, on Parkinson's disease. And we'll think about how a virus can have the same effects as a mutation. And we'll try and integrate all of these into the concept of heritability. Now, as before, we want to understand how the genetic variation causes phenotypic variation, or we want to understand what causes the differences in phenotypes that we see. And the new component is the environment. So let's think about height. Here's a baby girl. How tall is she going to be when she grows up? Well, it depends not just on the genes she inherited, but on her environment. If she's in a poor environment with many, she gets many infections, not enough nutritious food, and she gets little emotional care, little nurturing, she's going to be shorter than if she grows up in an environment with good nutrition. She gets her vaccination so she doesn't get infections. She gets lots of tender loving care. And this is not just sort of opinion. There is solid data supporting this. When the children of impoverished mothers who would have been receiving inadequate nutrition, the mothers got inadequate nutrition. If the mothers were given a nutrient supplement when they were pregnant, their children were about five centimeters taller. For you Americans, that's about two inches taller at age five. And Another component of the environment is maternal smoking. If the mother smoked, the children were on average about an in a centimeter shorter at age 11 than if their mothers didn't smoke. These are clearly environmental effects on a trait that we think of as being primarily genetic. So now I want to think back to the concept of heritability. We introduced this in lecture, three, lecture 5C. And we defined heritability as the degree to which differences in phenotype are due to differences in genotype. We won't be able to talk about how we measure heritability until part two, when we've discussed genetic inheritance in detail. But there are components of it that we need to think about now. And that is the extent to which what we are able to measure as heritability depends on the population and the environment. So first, the measurement, the value that we measure for heritability depends on which alleles are present in the population. We can describe that as the very, how much genetic variation there is in the population. So consider the two different populations um, we're looking at the same phenotype. One population is genetically uniform. One population is genetically diverse. But they're in the same environment. Which population will we measure higher heritability for? The answer is we'll measure low heritability for the genetically uniform population. And that's because most of the differences in phenotype in this population are going to be due to differences in environment, not differences in genotype. In the genetically diverse population, we'll measure high heritability because most of the phenotypic differences that we see will be due to differences in genes. So that was the first factor that heritability, that our measurement of heritability depends on. The second factor is the variability of the environment. So consider now a single genetically diverse population that we can replicate into two different environments. In one environment, we can think of it as the fair environment. Resources are evenly distributed. In the other unfair environment, some people get many more resources than others. Which environment will show 
higher heritability for the trait. The genetic features are identical, but the environment A is the one that will give us high heritability. We, when we measure heritability, we'll get a large percent because almost all of the differences in phenotype are going to be due to differences in genes. In the very variable environment, we're going to measure low heritability because much of the differences in phenotype are going to be due to the availability of resources to different people and in an environmental variable. So here's a quiz question for you um, addressing the, what we just covered. In two populations, one from a country with strong disparities in income and one from a, a very fair country, which population would you expect to show higher heritability for height? And the answer is that we'll see higher heritability for height in the population where everyone has equal access to resources. And that's because very little of the variation will be due to environmental variation. Now, here's a study that I thought was really cool. Um, it's sort of turning the genotype, the heritability environment issue on its head. So Parkinson's disease is a debilitating disease of neurological disease, uh, more common in older people. Um, it's thought to have a genetic component, but it's been very hard to pin down what to, to even be confidently say there is a genetic component or to identify the genes responsible. But it was known to have a strong environmental factor. And that is that if you drink a lot of coffee, you have a lower risk of Parkinson's disease. So this study is a not a genome-wide association study, but a genome-wide gene environment study. So they took large group of people and divided them into two groups, people who drank a lot of coffee and people who didn't drink coffee at all. And they measured their risk of Parkinson's disease, that measured the frequency of Parkinson's disease, and they looked for genetic variation that correlated with the effect of coffee drinking on Parkinson's disease. And they found a gene, genetic variation in a known gene that's been widely studied that regulate brain signals that control movement and behavior. That was very exciting because Parkinson's disease is a disease where it's very difficult to control body movements. Here's the genome-wide association study plot, and here's the gene. It's called GRIN A. So this study sort of turned genome-wide association studies on its head. They were able to use environmental variation to identify a genetic factor that contributed to the risk of Parkinson's disease. This genetic factor somehow interacts with the environmental effects of caffeine. So this is a very tantalizing clue to the underlying uh, molecular mechanisms of this very problematic disease. Now, here's another question. Consider two phenotypes, one that has high heritability and one that has low heritability. Which one would you expect to be more affected by environmental variation? And the answer is that the phenotype that has low heritability will be more susceptible to environmental variation because it's being affected by environmental variation that caused us to assign it low heritability in the first place. Now, I want to end by considering the extent to which environmental factors in genes can have the same effects. And a wonderful example comes from tulips. Some of you may know that several centuries ago, one of the very first catastrophic financial bubbles was people who were buying and selling 
exotic tulips. And we now know that these exotic tulips had the, their dramatic phenotypes. This is an illustration of uh, this is a very old illustration of one of those tulips, that this dramatic phenotype is caused by infection with a virus called tulip break virus. This wasn't realized at the time. Um, and it's the virus that's causing this dramatic striped coloration that was so valued. Unfortunately, we still like these tulips, but the virus greatly reduces the viability of the plants, and it's very hard to make any money selling tulips that are infected with a lethal virus. This is a modern variety of the same tulip, a tulip that is infected with the virus. So what geneticists have done is they've bred tulips that express the same phenotype because of a variant allele. So this is a tulip that has a very similar phenotype to these tulips. It's not infected by the virus. Instead, it has a variant allele controlling fl flower color that doesn't affect the viability of the plant. So it's easy to take for granted the effects of environment on our phenotypes and to forget about it when you're thinking about genetics. But of course, Everything that happens to us affects our phenotype. Um, we obviously think of things like scars and stains, um, surgeries, having children, getting old. These all obviously affect our phenotype. But there's lots of other factors as well. Every time we get an infection, it affects our immune system permanently. That's how immunity works. That's how vaccines work. Every time we're treated with an antibiotic, it changes the bacteria on our bodies and the bacteria inside our bodies in ways that can be permanent and that certainly affect other attributes of our phenotype. And even thinking and learning, taking this course, you are permanently changing the wiring of your brain by listening to me talk. I think that's really cool. So we've considered how height is affected by environmental factors. And then we backed up to think about heritability in general, how heritability is something that we measure. It's not a defined property of a set of genes and phenotype. Rather, heritability depends on the kinds of genetic variation that are present in the population that we're measuring. So we might measure different heritabilities for the same phenotype in different populations. It also depends on the amount of environmental variation so that we would measure a higher heritability in an environment where there was very little environmental effect on the, very, on the phenotype. And then we talked a little bit about how genetic and environmental factors can be hard to distinguish with the example of tulip viruses and the example of Parkinson's disease, where the interaction between genetic and environmental factors was a tool that let us find the genetic factors that we otherwise couldn't see. Coming up next, we're going to consider one more component of phenotypic variation, and that's the effect of chance. And then we're going to go on to three lectures about the genetics of cancer, where chance, again, plays a big role. I hope to see you there.